So I've just left Barnwell Lock and I've just left Neville Wright. Neville Wright is my landlord and I interviewed him on the back of the boat here. And he's a very interesting man. He actually owns the marina that we're just about to turn into and a bunch of other things. But um, one of the subjects of um, discussion was, um, was dyslexia. And um, I'm dyslexic and so is Neville quite severely. But he's done very well for himself and I wanted to talk to him about that. And um, his views on other things as well, which, um, which came across very strongly. Um, but unfortunately, I forgot to press the camera on. Um. I have been through uh, an hour's um, oh, an hour on stage, and then unfortunately, somebody hadn't switched the cameras on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Question one: What is dyslexia? He's not very happy with himself. Dyslexia is a wonderful thing in some ways. On my website, nevillewright.com, I've got this uh, thing about dyslexia and there's a video from YouTube. Letters kind of all fall off the page. I couldn't explain the teachers or my parents what I was seeing. Question two, what's it got to do with Mothership Marine? We just think differently. It's 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 a cock up. We're going to be talking about your cock ups later yeah. and, the, and the things that you've got wrong yeah. in your life, yeah. Neville. Well, you know. I say you learn with everything. So we're just going to this next lock, turn round, and do it all over again. You see, he's on his own there. You see, with that chap there. Um, whereas the people that are enjoying the serenity of it all. At the front. So we'll get to here and then we'll turn around. But yeah. it's just a pretty. You must have driven over this uh, bridge I've a few times. Driven over it a yeah. couple of times, that's all. Land belong to it. That's it's it's private land, I believe, but people camp on it. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I think it's the people that own it do the camping. All right, but it's a nice spot. Yeah. The thing that you find with this motor is that there's 250 newton meters of torque. This sort of manoeuvring, you've just got this power so low down, and it's incredibly efficient as well. I know you're selling many. It's, it is starting to slow down a little bit. We've got plenty of orders, yeah. but I think the economy is, um, for a high-end boat, is How getting... Well, they're sort of 250,000 really by the time you put a VAT. And what, and what can you get the same size boat? Well, if, you were, look at, if you were looking for a boat to go on the Mediterranean, um, you know, one of those big cabin cruisers, um, I mean, you're talking a million. Yeah. So that's that's the thing that it's not really recognised. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you're getting a lot of boat for your money. But it's not in the Mediterranean. So how much would you pay for like a diesel boat, same size, for a big manufacturer? I, I would say, well, the thing, the thing with our boats is that, that how we fit them out on the inside is very different to how a big manufacturer would do it. They, they use a lot of, you know, Howden's finishing yeah. and pre-finished yeah. um, uh, floorboards and things like that, whereas we used all of this reclaimed stuff and you'll know from building yourself that anything reclaimed just takes twice as long. So I would say that uh, a boat these days probably costs about 180. 
There you go. You steer. You steer. Yeah, that's going. I'm just. I'm just going to do this one here. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting level. I feel good about this. Good. Right, what do you want to know before the batteries run out? <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's um, go again. Alrighty. So, I'm out on the river with uh, with my landlord, which is an unusual thing to do on a Tuesday after. Well, it is afternoon now, isn't it? It started off as Tuesday morning. It it's midday. We're on the River Neen. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. We're just going past Lilford Hall, and um, Neville divulged to me that um, he wanted to buy this. Um, but he is actually an owner of a marina, an accidental owner of a marina, which I find, you know, sort of. There was no real plan, was there, uh, Neville? Yeah. Uh, the plan was in 2011. We had just sold one of our businesses. Um, we'd got a hundred million pounds and most of it was in cash. Uh, the plan was to park um, the money in different places that we thought um, would preserve the value. So it was, um, the marina was one thing. Yeah. You know? How's it worked out? Uh, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. That's because good. we, uh, there was nobody at the time in the marina, no commercial. Uh, people and it was a manufacturing hub for uh, Fairline boats and so we was paying I don't know, 100 and some odd thousand rates on empty mm -hmm. property and we decided to get planning permission for lots of houses and mm. and then by the time we'd got planning permission um, people like your good self would come along yeah. and, and everywhere was rented so yeah. um, that changed things and um, and we, we prefer to have buildings let with uh, businesses yes. running from them. Yeah. So um, did, that was it. Did you have a plan when you, I mean, do you plan? Yeah. Agents come to us, um, yeah. could come to us at any time, any day, yeah. and say, I've got this for sale. Yeah. And off we go Yes. in a different yeah. direction. Yes. And. Um, Somebody could come and say, I want to buy something from you. Yeah. And um, that's it. Yeah. You know, if yeah. that's the way life is. Let's go back, right back now okay. to early days. Yes. At, at school, school. Yeah. So you didn't like school, did you? Um, school for me was an institution that I never got on with. Yeah. Um, it said, it, it tried to make you do things you couldn't do. Yeah. It punished you when you couldn't do them, and it made you do more of the same yeah. thing. And yeah. when, if you was good at something, yeah. you wasn't encouraged to do more of that yeah. and less of the other. And I yeah. say there is a um, there's a way that you can <laughs> teach kids, and and the way is yeah. that um, do follow. A curriculum that they're interested in yeah. and everything else will fall into place yeah, yeah, yeah. but all they do is well I, I thought I was gun fodder for the next war right. that's what I thought I was there for <laughs> um, being beaten being humiliated being put down and as the um, uh, as a school teacher said you'll never amount to anything in life right yeah. um, and there you go. That's, that's, that's encouraging, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's yeah. very encouraging. It's no, very good like that. You see, there's a lot of reverse psychology. Whether they know it or not, it's reverse psychology because I used to think, uh, I used to think he was right at the time, but then when I was 24, I began to change my mind and think completely different yeah. because they'd brainwashed me into thinking that I was useless, I was yeah. stupid, I was no good, I'd never amount to anything and I'd spend my life on the dole uh, or in meaningless, doing meaningless tasks. Yes. Um, yeah. So it, a lot of it is reverse psychology. Yeah. I think. So what were, you, what were you good at then? 
that you didn't get the opportunity I was, to have a go I was at. good at physical work. Right, okay. Anything from, like, uh, when I was seven, I had a, a, I helped the milkman. Yeah. You know, when I was eight, um, I probably did, oh, well, I was doing people's gardens, yeah. eight, nine. Um, when I was ten, I was an errand boy. I was yeah. used to uh, post... They used to call it Normid News through the letterbox okay. of thousands yeah, of people yeah. each yeah, month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, so it went on. Yeah. So yeah. I'd always got jobs. Yeah. Errand boys and whatever. I was a butcher boy. I was a. Uh, worked. Oh, I've worked in so many places yes. as well. Yeah. And, and since leaving yeah. school, yeah. leaving this institution yeah. that I hated yeah. uh, was the best thing ever because yeah. that's when I started to learn. And yeah. I've got. Dyslexia, a dyslex I'm dyslexic and a ADHD. Yeah, I, I just realised I'm. Who's that? Let me just. So, sorry sorry about this. Yeah, I'll, I'll, right. I'll take over. Um, won't be a second. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Hello, is that Neville? Yes. Oh yeah, he's not recording that for the heat contract. Yeah. Um, they have managed to get that sync base on okay. for all our delivery. And what I'll do, I don't know when they're going to come. We do, it comes sort of on a Wednesday, Thursday rush. Normally we're on the Wednesday. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll give you a call soon and send in. Lovely. Let me know where it is and I'll come and pick yeah. it up. All right. All right then, brilliant. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yes. Sorry, I had to take that. So you're still working? You're still picking up bits um, and bobs. You steer. I'm yeah, enjoying so, it. Yeah. So, so um, <coughs> we've got nine companies that are currently uh, got a lot of work on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we do a lot of building, house building, factories, warehouses, yeah. um, and then there is the money side. You know the investments on stocks and shares and mm -hmm. and, and businesses other right. businesses yes. as well yes so um, lots and lots going on mm -hmm. and um people say why are you not retired and i go well what is retirement yeah. doing what you want to yeah. do when you want to do it yeah um and hopefully with the money yeah well i'm doing what i want to do yeah. when i want to do it yeah. every single day yeah and uh, that's and i've done that since i was 24. Yeah. So yeah. I retired at 24, really. Right. Okay. You know, it depends on what you call retirement. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm, I try and work as hard as I can um, physically because I want to keep my body in good condition. Um, I'm looking forward to 2050 because the, I mean, we've got the Agenda 21 and the Agenda 30 in the world. And then they've got the agenda to 2050. Well, I'll be 100 then. Right. And I'll like to see all that collapse and it never happen. Um, <laughs> you know, when, so, will you be there saying, I told you I was right? Yeah. It's in my name. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and I think World War Three started uh, in just uh, 2020. And I said that and I got banned from Facebook. Oh wow. Um, and I said it's a different type of war. It's not like one country going uh, to war with another. Mm. It's that you're at war with the powers that be yeah. who are trying to um, cripple you. Yes. So um, oh, I don't think we're here for that conversation. Well, it's, it's, an in, it's an interesting <laughs> little um, uh, tangent to, tangent, to, to yeah. go up. And there. I go off yeah. on tangents. Yeah. So you had a bad time at school, we've, we've, Very we've bad. summed that up. And, and Horrendous. But you did meet your wife, I Marilyn. Did. Uh, yeah, I was 16 and seven days. She was 15 and uh, it was, uh, I think it was June the uh, 25th, something like that, on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I met her. Anyway, yeah. so that was a long time ago, Yeah. 1966. Yeah. And... Um, 
But I can't believe how beautiful it is, it is out here it today. It is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. indeed. And if we wasn't doing this, I'd be bored to tears because yeah, I yeah. need to be yeah. doing something yeah. 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 all the time. What, what, what time do you get up in the morning? Because you said you've got ADHD. Yeah. And, I, and, yeah. and here's the thing, you see. There's a lot of kids who've got ADHD. And yeah. we know that they're running around and, and yeah. you're trying to keep the red juice uh, away from them. And what do they do, yeah. what do, they do uh, to school? They make them sit down. No. And the, yeah. and the kids are looking out the classroom and they, they're seeing pictures yeah. in the sky, you yeah. know, they, and they make them sit down and pay attention. Yeah. No, let them yeah. run about and, yeah. and do, but in a controlled yeah. way yeah. of doing exercise. Yeah. And um, it's, it is getting better. I might have told you that my wife is a head teacher in her school. They yeah. do a lot to, to help kids in, you know, with, 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 with these things. But I think they're sort of. In, in a funny sort of way, superpowers. You were saying, mm. what time do I get up? Mm. Well, it depends on what time I go to bed, because mm. I always go to bed, uh, when I was writing my book, three and a half years, I always made sure I went to bed uh, before 20 to, 20 to four, something like that, <laughs> which was the birds. So I wrote my book between 10, in, 10 at night and three in the morning, really. Mm. Mm. Um, Last night I went to bed at one o'clock this morning and I got up at six. Yeah. So I'd obviously had enough sleep. Yeah. Um, I never have an alarm clock. Yeah. Never. I've never mm. had uh, an alarm clock. Uh, when, well, before I was 24, when I thought the world owed me a living and things wasn't fair, I had an alarm clock. Well, how alarming is that to get up to that? <laughs> you know, after that, I just naturally yeah. got up. Yeah. Because you want to get up, set set uh, yeah. your time. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get up at six o'clock this morning, yeah. and I did. Yeah. So sometimes it's five, sometimes sometimes it's eight. It depends yeah. on what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, um, but I never spend any time laying in bed. I might go to bed, sleep. Or you get up. Get up. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was was businesses because you started an, an awful lot of businesses, and yeah. I know that um, you, you you mentor people in in doing that kind of thing. Yeah. But when you s s see a business idea, yeah. what's going through your mind, or do they all come? You know, do you, do you get ten business ideas a day, and you say? No, 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 no. Ah, oh, maybe. Is that how does it work for you? We get a lot of uh, proposals which I don't take anymore. Yeah. Um, mainly because people could do them themselves, yeah. but they they want to hedge their bets. Yes. And they want somebody else to be responsible. Yeah. Um, and when you say you could do it, and they go no can't, I haven't got the money, and they say, well, do you own your house? And they say, yes, but I'm not putting that on the line. Yeah. Uh, oh, so you want me to put mine on the line, do you? Yeah. You know, so um, they're not really uh, in it 100%. Yes. And yeah. so, yeah. therefore, if you're in it, you've got to be in it to win it, and yeah. you've got to put everything on the line. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, 2009, in the recession, 2010, no, 2009, or maybe it's eight, um, we owed 14 million pounds. I was doing a new build on a, a new store. Um, that was going to be paid off in three years of profit. But instead of starting to, uh, instead of making a profit like we used to, we started making a 250,000 a month loss. So therefore, it was rapidly going down, and that three years looked like it would be never the way the recession was. So we sold our house that we'd been in for 26 years, 8,000 square feet, indoor swimming pool of marble. It was luxurious. Uh, we um, left it, we sold it in a week um, for 500,000 less than the um, people said we could um, put it on the market for. I needed the money. We went and lived. We took our suitcases, left everything in the house, everything uh, in the garden, everything in the shed, everything. Um, and we took our suitcases and went and lived in our office for two and a half years. Yeah. And that was to save 125 full-time jobs. And um, we could have easily run away. I'd got a three million pound cash pension pot. Yeah. Um, and I was able to take all of that money out and put it into the business as well as the money from the house yeah. uh, because I knew that if it went down like it looked like it was going to go down 
um, I knew that I could start a business the following day, yeah. like window cleaning, whatever. Yeah. I could I could go and live in a 10 foot caravan like I lived in there for yeah. a start. But I knew 125 people who had their families yeah. uh, couldn't do that. Yeah. You know, that maybe one or two could, but mm. majority can't. Yes. Um, so when your back's against a wall, you do things that uh, I would say kind of the normal run-of-the-mill person wouldn't wouldn't yeah. do yeah. you know and you've yeah. got to have that entrepreneurial get up and go and um and and so this is why i don't put money into most people's businesses yeah. because they're hedging the bets too much yeah. an entrepreneur is somebody who can recognize something they can't do it themselves yes. but they yeah. they've they can organize it yes yeah yeah indeed and it's taking the responsibility for us isn't it it's actually putting your hands up and saying let's bring these people together yeah. that things happen so yeah. in kitty care a lot of people would come either for the shop floor or they'd come for the warehouse uh, job and then within a, a few weeks or few months we'd see what they're good at see yeah. what they're interested in what they're passionate what their hobbies are yeah. and then we would find a job that, that yeah. suited see, it, it, see, this is coming back to full circle as to what you were saying about being at school and being forced yeah, to do other things. Really. Yeah. And you know, they never, at, at school, quite often, if you, you might be good at maths and you're not very good at English. So they send you on an extra English class. Yeah. You know? yeah, now, if you that. What yeah. about extra math yeah. class? Now, <laughs> just think of the logic. If you were good at football, but yeah. they said, no, we want you to improve your tennis. Yeah. You know, no. it's that same thing, isn't it? Yeah. So find out what people are good at and give them a whirl and, um, and let them go. Yeah, let them roll with it all, which, um, which I think is wonderful. We're going down that way. Yes, right, okay. yes, that's it, yeah. The thing with this boat, it's so quiet that you, you hear everything that's going on. Yep. The worst place to be is actually going up the Grand Union Canal when you've got the train on one side and the bloody M1 on the other side. Because right. it's wheel, 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 wheel on one side and yeah. vroom on the other side. And it's awful. You know, it really is. But you, you just get, see, I can even hear the cows walking in the field. Now tell me what you think about the electrification of, of everything as it's going to perhaps well, be. Ele electrification is not new. Yeah. You know, if you look back in history, there was a lot of cars that were electric a um, hundred years ago. Um, big, uh, big business has got rid of those. Um, I think it is the electric car will go like the DeLorean and um, today's electric car will go like the DeLorean and the C5, right. Sinclair C5, <laughs> right? Because yeah. how, uh, why would you buy? I say to people, well, what's it fueled by? And they say electric, mm. no, what's it? It's either mm. gas, oil, you know, it's wood, mm. it's coal. Mm. What is your car fueled by? Yeah. And they think it's green yeah. and it's not. Yeah. You know, it's, it's now, this is a this boat is a different thing altogether this is unique mm. this is being uh the sun powers it yeah, yeah and so that's quite a unique thing and it's good but when you come to the battery cars what's the life of a battery eight years and like where that. does it come from i think it should have uh, the stars mm. on each of the uh, electric cars mm. on and this or a little child symbol of a child how mm. many how many yeah. children's lives did this car cost yeah. in in yeah. getting that yeah. um, out of the ground yeah. and how are they ruining the uh, landscape and everything mm. to try and make yeah. batteries yeah i think it's wicked i do yeah. and yeah. so therefore you know i'm i'm, I'm against uh, electric cars um but i was where when we stopped having the horse and carts uh, in the 50s, we went on to electric uh, milk floats. Yeah. Mm. So they were going at the time. Electric cars were yeah. going at the time. Uh, yeah. But I think yeah. it's. Um, yeah. I think it's. Yeah, I agree with you. We've got to get renewable sources from wind, solar, um, nuclear. I'm in favour of indeed. So Neville, we're coming to the end. I want to thank you very much, sincerely, 
you know, it's, you've well. been a good sport, <laughs> and the fact that we've gone through these questions twice, you know, we'll, uh, uh, yeah, we've we'll, got two lots of answers as well. We, we've, we've got two lots of answers. We managed to get all of the sound on the first time, but um, me cocking it up um, on the cameras. Unfortunately, it's just Doesn't something matter. I have to live with, and um, at the end of the day, there. Well, it hasn't. Um, it hasn't deterred me, or it hasn't. Um, just you know, you accept these things. Yeah. yeah. Accept the things you cannot change. Yes. Have the courage to change the things you can. Yeah. But have the wisdom, and this yeah. is what I've yeah. got. Yes. Yeah. Have the wisdom to know the difference.